Hi, welcome to Numeric's video blog. I am your host, Jim Jockel. As the ongoing discussions around the standardizations and move towards OIS discounting continue to advance, a major coup in standardization has just occurred. Uh, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, uh, has recognized the OIS rate as a hedge accounting benchmark. And with me today to talk about this is Tom Davis, uh, PhD, uh, pro Senior VP, Product Manager uh, for Numerics Cross Asset. Welcome, Tom. How are you? Good. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. Well, appreciate it. One of the key issues, so, you know, uh, a lot of lobbying has been going on in terms of, of getting the OIS uh, rate to be uh, identified. But the key question is, with this move, how will this help in terms of eliminating potential hedge ineffectiveness? So the market has moved, as we've seen, as evidenced by the clearinghouses, all using the overnight rates for the discounting for any cleared swap. Um, and the market's really moved for any cash collateralized derivative. And in terms of hedge effectiveness, what this is, is the corporates who have projected uh, future cash flows and future cash flow ob obligations, what they want to do is they want to buy a derivative in order to meet those. Say you want to sw swap fixed for floats, for instance. Um, so these corporates uh, buy derivatives, and the accounting regulations say that the, your, your future obligations you uh, account for on an amortized basis. However, any derivative has to be accounted for on a fair market value, and that's subject to a lot of P&L uh, uh, fluctuations that adds a lot of volatility to their balance sheet that really is, lies outside of their core business operations. So there's a, a, a regime and a set of rules set up by FASB that allow for hedge effectiveness that if you can show that the, uh, the derivative and the cash flows match, so what you're doing is really hedging those cash flows by use of the derivative, um, then you can actually not, you don't have to account for the derivative in terms of P&L. You can do it on an amortized basis like your future obligations. Um, and so what we've seen is after the switch to uh, OIS discounting in the market, the FASB hedge effectiveness rules did not allow for the, the discounting to be done at the overnight rate. It still had to be done at the LIBOR rate but didn't really account for how the derivatives were funded, and there was a mismatch between the pricings, which gave rise to a mismatch in the hedge effectiveness, making a lot of the, the derivatives have to go back on balance sheet, which was not very uh, palatable to a lot of these corporates. Uh, and so what happened is there's been a lot of lobbying. In November 17th, there was a letter presented to FASB, a joint letter from ISDA and SIFMA, uh, lobbying for the OIS to be introduced as the discounting rate, and it has. And so FASB has just announced this week that the official uh, benchmark rate for discounting cash collateralized derivatives is the OIS rate, reflecting what the market practice and the market consensus is. And so that's going to increase uh, and get back in line really the hedge effectiveness costs for a lot of the, uh, the derivatives that corporates hold to hedge their future obligations. Now, not everybody has moved to uh, an OIS discounting. I, as we know and, and we continue to hear about some of the challenges insurers are having uh, in this space. Um, as, so what is the timelines and what happens uh, to those who haven't fully implemented uh, this type of uh, regime in their institution? Well, if for the market data, if you go to the market and you strip your forward curves, and you strip your discounting curves, you're going to be using this uh, implicitly anyway because all of the quotes from the, the swaps that you see in the swaptions are going to incorporate this, this two-curve approach or this, this, uh, this different discounting. So in some sense, a lot of the market data that you're going to be using and consuming already have this in, in place. Um, there's a couple things where there's still going to be some mismatch between what the market is doing and what, what you're going to be doing in-house. For instance, uh, one thing in the FASB ruling that I want to point out is that they have not identified the Fed fund rate as a source of interest rate exposure. So it's still limited to the LIBOR rate and the Treasury rate. And so if your future obligations have any exposure, explicit exposure to the Fed funds, then you're not even going to be able to put that into your hedge accounting uh, program. And so that's a, the, the story is still evolving. And that's another thing that the, the consultants out there, risk consultants are saying this has to be another step forward. So it's still it's still an open question and the story is still evolving in that sense. And we, we've seen uh, uh, many reports at this point in time where uh, there was a market opportunity for those who, between those who have adopted a, a, a dual curve approach versus those who had it. Is this a pretty much a pretty signal to the end that uh, the arbitrage opportunity around this has gone? That's a good question. Um, in terms of a signal in the marketplace, it is 
uh, it is um, a, a big signal. I mean, it, what we're seeing now is that this is a board that is out to protect, in some sense, the, the buy side, who's not as savvy as uh, the sell side in a lot of instances. And so this, this market announcement that FASB and the accounting bodies have adopted this, I think is a big sig signal that this is, this is not just a flash in the pan. This is here to stay. Um, this overnight discounting is, is very well understood now uh, by the markets, and it's pushed, it's based on and compelled to us by cash collateralization, and you fund your derivative from the cash rate. Uh, of course, there's the other point of view that says LIBOR is not risk-free. It has credit risk embedded in it, and so therefore the OIRS rate is, the overnight rate, is the most uh, closest proxy to the uh, risk-free rate. So yes, now that the accounting boards have stepped in and said, okay, we're using OAS, I think that does signal that, that OAS is really prevalent and, and should be adopted whole scale for cash collateralized derivatives in the marketplace. Well, Tom, thank you so much for uh, the insights. And it looks like uh, one chapter is closing, but another chapter as it relates to the FDA debate is going to be much more uh, top of mind. And uh, Tom, I look forward to getting in, into that a little bit more with you. I know we've talked about it in the past. We want to hear what you think. Please uh, join the conversation on Twitter, at NX Analytics, or on our blog. We want to hear your feedback and make sure we're talking about the things you want to talk about. Tom, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Jim.